Welcome to this tutorial request. In this video we will be enhancing our multiplayer ability system and adding damage to it. So let's jump into it and see what we will be doing. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is what we will be creating today. We will be taking the multiplayer ability system that we created in earlier tutorials and just show how you can easily add on damage functionality to them. So now each of these abilities have been enhanced in the base method for the abilities to always do five damage on the target. So when I do an ability on a target, you can see that the server is reducing its hit points. Now in this case from 100 to 95, and this works for all the abilities. And you can have easily different logic for different abilities of how damage is supposed to be calculated. And you can also have abilities that do damage and abilities that don't do damage and such. And it's determined by whoever is uh, the target of the ability who gets damage applied currently. So here we are inside of the <clears throat> multiplayer ability system. Now I will leave a link uh, in the description and also as a little card in the top right uh, for you if you haven't done uh, the system, follow the tutorials there, or you can just download the pro pro full project if you want to. Uh, the project will start from the point where we're starting at right now, which is without having the damage uh, currently. So how does this work to begin with? Well, let's just play and we'll see that we get these three uh, windows playing. We have two clients connected and one server. And what we have is we have uh, the ability to use some abilities like knocking them up in the air and pushing them away and also teleporting. Uh, those are the three abilities that we created in the multiplayer ability system and it's all replicated and such. What we're going to do now is just show how easy it is to add uh, ab abilities that have damage on them, essentially. So, starting off, what we need to do first is we need to have our character. And our character, we need to have some kind of system to keep track of how much hit points it has. Now, you might have some more advanced uh, hit point system. Uh, in, in your project if if you want to like enhance this further uh, but the, the general concept should be the same and it should be easy for you to do, just adapt to whatever system you want to run uh, to make this easy we're just going to be making a hit points variable which we choose to be a float we will set it to be replicated and we'll compile it so we can have a default value of let's say 100 like so. Then in our character, we just right click and type in, uh, let's see, what's it called? The uh, damage, event any damage. From here, we can just say we want to get our hit points. We want to subtract whatever value we're getting in from this event. And we want to set our current hit points to be whatever the new value is. Like so. This is very simple and essentially all that we need to do. Now we actually have our hit point system in place. So what we can do is to further explain how this is working. We can have a print here where we just show what kind of value we're getting here. Like so. Since event damage, or event any damage in this case, is run on the server, as you can see by the icon up top here, this will only be running on the server, and the server will be the only one printing this out. So now we have half of what we need to make this work. The next thing we will do is we will go to the blueprint ability, which is the base class for all of our abilities, and uh, we will make it so that it's easy to change all of your children's blueprint uh, damage parameters so you can have different damage for all of them and you can have completely different calculations for how you want to calculate damage if you wanted to as well. But uh, in essence, if uh, you haven't followed along uh, with the tutorial and just downloaded it, or if it was a long time since you did it, uh, here is essentially how it works. So our ability system has first an attempt of trying to uh, use an ability and we 
when we attempt to use it, we have this function here, actually. Let's go in here. So we try to do something and we uh, first make some considerations of if we are allowed to, essentially. In this uh, project, it's a very simple check of can use, and this could be more complex in your case. And then we just have an animation and it has a point at which it uh, says that it is now performing the ability. At that point in time, we are then getting the event of use confirmation being run. And our use confirmation event is over here. So at this point, we have established that the character was allowed to do the ability. It came far enough in the animation, so it actually triggered the ability. Uh, and now we can react upon it. So the first part is that we are using the ability. So this is the the overloaded events that we have in our children classes to say what actually the ability does. So in, in this example, we have an ability to uh, launch a character into the air. We have a push ability on characters and we also have a teleport ability. So all of these are just overloaded in the children's use event. After that, we activate our cooldowns and then we unbind an event, uh, the event that uh, was lying waiting for the animation because we don't need it anymore. So. Expanding upon this, we can drag the latter half of this away a little bit, and we can enter a custom event over here. So we'll create a custom event, and we can call this apply damage. Going up here, we can now call this event apply damage. That's probably a poor name. Let's do, hmm. We don't want to confuse this with existing functionality of that's related to damage. So let's call this something very specific like uh, cause ability damage or something like that. Then we'll call this up here. Cause ability damage, like so. And the reason we're doing it like this is, first of all, we have a function now or an event here, which is easy to just overload. So you can have how the, the ability damage is calculated done on a child by child basis, essentially. So that's that's one thing. And we're calling it up here. So we always have this uh, chain going in exactly the same way from the base class. So it gets inherited by the children as well. So uh, we can put in some base functionality here just to have its function uh, overall. So what we can do is we can get uh, make a ability damage variable and we can make it of the type float like so and then we can drag it out and now what we want to do is we want to make some very simple calculation or or effect of damaging our character that we want to hurt with our ability since this is the base class we can have this super simple so we'll just do a normal apply damage So, and we'll apply damage over here, and we'll say that the damage caster is owner, and we'll say that the instigator is uh, instigator controller, like so. Clean this up a little bit. And lastly, we need to have the damaged actor, which is the intended target that we already have established earlier in the code. Like so. Then we can have a print from this to just get uh, an idea of what is happening. And then let's walk through this and see how this works. So there we go. So now if we start playing, you'll see we get three windows. We can click one of the clients over here. We'll press one of the abilities. We launch them in the air and you'll see it prints zero, zero, zero. So what, why is that happening? Well, exiting out, we'll get an error and it says we have a reference incorrect for the apply damage. And the reason for that is we're using the get owner here, which is not something we can make use of, but we have a replacement. We have our use owner that we have established earlier that we're funneling through the system. So we'll hook that up, like so. And I'll dismiss this. And we'll try again. And we use an ability. And we see that it types 000 again. 
and we'll go out and we'll see what is causing this. Most likely I haven't set a default value for, yes. So ability is not doing any damage. Let's set a default value of five. We'll try again. And now hopefully we should be able to demonstrate what's happening. There we go. Okay, so you see it's typing zero, zero, zero and five and 95. So let's press the tilde key and we can see what's happening here. So this is client one, it says zero. So this has to do with, if we go back to the code, uh, we're applying damage here. And let's actually start over here. So we have on, on the server, the event any damage, this is being run by the server only. And this is displayed by the value of 95 that we see, because we have a, a hit point value of 100. If we do this, minus five is 95. So the server is registering that, the, that this character's hit point, which is replicated, is being set to 95 now. So that's where, where that message is coming from. The ability damage, however, this is being called by all the different, um, uh, all the different clients because they're all replicating that this is happening however uh, only the server is authorized to apply the damage so what's happening is when we're going here and we're typing or typing we're using an ability we see clients one and one and two are typing out zero and the server is typing out five. So the server is the one that's actually distributing the five damage to the character that is being hit. And we can also, let's do this like so. We can now move to a different client, this one over here. Oh, this one is actually the one that got hurt. So we'll take the server, run over here, and we'll use the ability on him and you can see that it has now subtracted another five and we're down to 90 hit points on this character now if we were to try it on a different character this one over here you can see it has 95 now so it's keeping track of the different hit points the drawback about this is of course we have set this as an ability that's going to be applied to any character regardless of what ability we have so this makes sense in the in the cases where we're doing the launch character for example like this and it might make sense in the pushback ability like this but the teleport ability like this possibly doesn't really match so now we still are doing damage so what you would have to do then is open up the different abilities and go into teleport and say that the teleport you also have to show inherited variables and change the ability damage to be zero for example for this one if it's not supposed to apply damage uh, or just have different calculations for for them all together by overloading the cost ability damage uh, for them so yeah that's how easy it is to just hook in some uh, damage to the abilities i hope all of this made sense and that you were able to follow along Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.